Are you a mom who loves fun, momming, and protecting your family? If you want to meet some of the most amazing people from all over the gun world and beyond, you are in the right place. Tune in for encouragement and sometimes just courage for moms and women just like you who are curious about shooting but are intimidated or just don't know where to start. Hey, all you tough mothers. I have a super cool guest with me today. His name is Stephen Powell. Stephen is an Air Force veteran with more than 18 years of combined federal, military, and civilian law enforcement experience. He has been teaching professionally for over 25 years as a firearms instructor for numerous organizations uh, and agencies rated with the NRA. He was a New Mexico and Texas DPS and a Sig Sauer Academy Master Instructor. Six hours, one of my favorite brands. So very cool. Yeah. Uh, awesome. His company, Patriot Outdoors Inc., has been operational in the defense training industry since 2004, starting around a thousand acre training facility located in eastern New Mexico. Um, he's a Patriot and has provided crucial and relevant firearms training to DOD and SOCOM, state and local law enforcement, and armed, uh, armed citizen students. He's uh, also created a new outlet for his experience and passion by creating the Gun Life Coach, which is an yep. educational and motivational approach to helping others in life and on the range. Over the several years, Powell has appeared on several Fox News, Sirius XM Radio, various regional newspapers, radio, TV shows, promoting military veteran entrepreneurship and patriotism, as well as educating the shooting industry on range development, media relations, Second, can, uh, sorry, key Second Amendment issues, and is currently a contributor to Politicrossing.com and Sinclair Broadcasting Group. Stephen is uh, outdoors, and his motivational platform, the Gun Life Coach, are currently operating out of Phoenix, Arizona. Stephen, that's right. Can't wait to hear your story. Um, what kind of got oh, all cool. of this into? You know, how'd you get all this started? And uh, you know, yeah. let, let's let's hear it. Uh, I don't know how far we want to go back, so let's um, <laughs> let's go with. Um, like I was with... a child at five years <laughs> old. <laughs> I was born a very long time ago. Um, so yeah, speaking of being born. So I, I grew up on the East Coast and I was surrounded by um, our founding fathers, uh, you know, where everything started. I grew up south of Philadelphia in Delaware. And so I grew up very patriotic, you know, with a, with a mom and dad that appreciated our country. And my dad's an avid outdoorsman. And um, it was just very apparent to me that I wanted to serve my country and go into this and go into the service. Didn't know which branch at the time, but by the time I became a senior, I went into the Air Force. You know, I figured out I was going to go in the Air Force. So served in the military. Uh, my focus was in law enforcement and investigations in the Air Force, became an OSI agent and worked uh, narcotics investigations with the Air Force and went into civilian law enforcement and got into training. And uh, because of my experiences in the Air Force, I was able to uh, get a lot of um, extracurricular training that most Air Force personnel don't get. And, and that really catapulted my shooting career and my love for, for teaching uh, because I really did suck with a pistol. I mean, I barely qualified in the Air Force. I couldn't hit the side of Baghdad. It was horrible. And um, I had- Is that like people... one of the tests where they just kind of like stand you at the border and they're like, just shoot. <laughs> yeah. You're like, can you, can you shoot it? Yeah, can you do that? <laughs> no, it, it, was, it was actually, it wasn't even that complicated, the Air Force qualification. It's just that I grew up shooting shotguns in the, you know, for duck and geese and dove and small game and not really handling a pistol much. So anyway, I, I had an affection for pistol shooting and, and did well in competitions and such. And, and um, I was teaching somewhere in Ohio at the time and uh, with civilian law enforcement. And they're like, hey, you know, um, what, you're, you're kind of coaching people. Why don't you, why don't you like teach them? Um, you're the instructor, right? I'm like, no, I'm not the instructor. Well, pal, why don't you help them? So it, it kind of spurred me on to become an instructor. And um, you know, here we are, 2021, and I, we've taught, my company and I have taught, I don't know, maybe hundreds of thousands of people. I know that we've had over 250,000 people pass through Patriot Outdoors um, when it was open. And um, it, was, it was such a blessing to see so many people. So my passion is, as much as I I loved law enforcement and, and I love teaching on the range. Um, my, my passion has come from helping see people. Um, I mean, even like you, I mean, people who want to succeed, they want to evolve their skills. And uh, I, I get a lot of joy out of that. Seeing people that are timid become fearless, seeing people that are inverted become extroverted women, because we're probably talking to many moms out there today. I mean, I've seen hundreds and hundreds of women come out of their shell. 
and become empowered. I've seen rape victims become confident. I've seen battered women become superior over their fears and over their insecurities and, and become accomplished. And um, that is a life-changing moment. And those type of life-changing experiences are what help propel others to be more successful. And, and that's part of the reason why, fast forwarding to why I started the Gun Life Coach, because men and women alike need encouragement. They need to be empowered with certain skills and abilities and the right knowledge in context to help them become a better person, whether it's in life or on the range, as, as I say. Yeah, absolutely. I think I have a, a soft spot in my heart for um, broken people. <laughs> my yeah. husband always says I'm a collector of broken people. And um, just, you know, seeing people that have gone through trauma, rape victims or assault or even abduction or people who had been in abusive relationships, um, yeah. men and women, but mostly women. Um, right just that, that feeling of powerlessness. And even yeah. though they may have gotten themselves out of that trauma and received counseling, there's always that thing in the back of their mind that they are vulnerable and susceptible to it happening again. So aside Absolutely. from like just the mind shifts and making sure that you don't end up in those environments again, that gun just, you know, even if you never use it is just something like this it gives you so much confidence that you're able to protect yourself, which I think a lot of them have that fear. Like, you know, I, yes. you know, what happens if this tries to, ha you know, then the likelihood is, right. is, is low, but mm -hmm. that confidence that they can go out there and not get hurt or, you know, harmed again is immeasurable. And yes, uh, I've seen that as well, where women are just like, yeah, I am not, I refuse to be a victim again. I absolutely yes. refuse to be a victim again. And I, yes. it's invaluable. So that's awesome. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. I, I enjoy it. Um, I mean, I've seen, I've seen things actually, unfortunately go full circle where I've seen uh, women, female students that I've had know nothing, rent a gun, go to the range, test fire, a gun, or I say test drive a gun, you know, test drive a gun a couple of times. Next thing you know, I'm seeing them in classes and I'm seeing them in more classes. And then there, here we go. Now it, it's more than one year and they're still training and they're training with their husband or on their own or with other women. And uh, I have one lady in particular, and uh, you guys can connect with her. Um, please do check her out. Her name is Heather Miles. She is, she will not look like anybody that's supposed to be some superstar, but she's a superstar in my book because she's a classic example of an average lady with an average career, with an average home, with an average environment, get hit in the face with a lot of reality when someone tried breaking in her house and she was prepared. And after three years of training, two weeks after they moved out of our area and they moved into Wichita, somebody broke in the house wow. and started to try to have a, an interesting conversation with her that was more on the sexual side. And she met him with a Glock. And he ran away after he had one more hole in him than he, than he came in with. So he didn't die, but he ran to the hospital and then he went to jail. So um, it was a, it was a great, it was a great example of someone who, who paid attention in class, who took it to heart and said, you know, I don't think anything's ever going to happen to me. In fact, she said that over and over. Her name's Heather. She said that over and over and over again. She's like, oh man, nothing like that will ever happen. Maybe, maybe, I never thought this would ever happen to me after coming on the other side of it. It's like, right. I never thought anything like that would ever happen to me. And, and that's the thing. that It was the prepared, not paranoid mentality. And yes, she had a tool and she knew how to use it. You know, she showed up, you know, she showed up in the hallway in her Victoria's Secret with her two kids in bed and her husband's out of town, you know? And so there was nobody that was going to save her in that moment. Nobody. And somebody at six foot four, 240 pounds, 19 year old convicted rapist is seven to 10 feet away from you. There's a lot of things that start running through your head. And if you do not have that, now I'm preaching. Okay. Now, if you do not have that particular set of skills of what to do, look for their hands, what's going on. Obviously they already broke into your house. There's no good intent there, right. you know, and she's five, let's just say she's five, four. I don't even remember. She's five, four, five, five, whatever. Sorry, Heather, I don't remember your, your height. <laughs> um, Height's okay. You know, Weight, not so much. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. It doesn't matter. It was the, a huge disparity of force issue. And there was no way that you put these two people in a ring. Who's going to come out on top? Not right. her. Unless she had something to equalize that situation, which was Mr. Glock. So 
Um, it's just kudos to her and many, many, many women uh, and, and men, but women out there that are able to have the forethought to go ahead and train, understand how important that consistency in training is. So they have that subconscious performance available to them if and when that bad day comes. Yeah, I can't agree with you more. It's the training, it's the repetition, it's the knowledge, and it's the confidence. Because like you said, nobody ever expects, I mean, that's not true. The majority of us never expect to be attacked. Sure. We, sure. we, we don't expect somebody to break into our home and try to rape us. We don't, you know, right. I mean, there are obviously some people who have been through trauma that might have that on their mind more often, but even if they do, right. when it actually yeah. happens, it's, it's a shock, right? You don't expect yeah. somebody to be in your home and you you kind of go into that like reptilian brain function, right? Like all the other stuff kind of like melts away and it's kind of fight or flight. And yeah. if you don't have that training, being able to focus, okay, what am yep. I going to do? What's my situation aware, uh, situational awareness? Right. What are my exits? Where are my kids? What can I, you know, how can I do that? If you don't have that training, all of that goes out the window. And now you've basically just got, a, you know, a, useless weapon with a high rate of, of liability and yeah. you can hurt somebody yeah. other than that person. So it's not yeah. just about having the gun. It's about having that training. And yeah, that you're absolutely right. And there's a phrase that I started using, I call them range quotes. So I've got, I've got dozens of them. That's why one of the reasons why I have so much content for the gun life coach and it's called your, your body can't go where your mind has never been. That's good. You know, hands holding a gun, hands grabbing the kid, throwing it, you know, throwing a kid in the car seat or throwing them, you know, getting them out of the way, pushing the strolling, you know, the, the, the cart out of the way, whatever that situation might be, you will not have the ability to do that. Oh, you can say you're going to step to the left, you know, two jabs and a left hook. You can say you're going to do that. But until you've gotten into that situation over and over and over again, have had parallel training. And I'm speaking with just like any other great instructor out there is going to tell you this, you, you will not perform how you think unless you've been there. And that's why training is so crucial. Yeah, so, absolutely. I mean, it's just so the, like with anything, right? Like you've got boxing, for example, like you see these guys in the rings and they're just hitting each other, but you know that in their mind, they're like, okay, I know that he, you know, threw a left jab or whatever, and I'm going to block. And then right. I'm going to go up because he's going to be vulnerable. And yeah. it happens so quickly, but it's their repetition and their training that they're able to make those adjustments and make those mental things. And I'm sure they're not processing all of it, but it becomes automatic with their body when they like right. react to certain situations, um, yeah. which is, yeah. which is great. And so as far as like new women shooters going into like, you know, I've, I've never shot a gun. I'm intimidated to shooting a gun. Kind of what's that natural progression that you see in your experience mm -hmm. when women come in and, and ask for training? Oh, Natalie, that's such a great question. <laughs> that's such a great question. So, um, yeah, I, I've, I've, I've taught dozens of women at a time and everybody comes from different backgrounds, right? I mean, they've been, let's just say, I'm going to, throw out something that's pretty cliche. Maybe they grew up on, on the West coast where it's a little more liberal. And then you've got women from Texas that are definitely not. Okay. So you have, there's such a mix, whether they've been, and, they, and none of them have been, have been exposed to firearms training. I've had women say they needed to use the bathroom. They almost threw up in my class because I'm, I'm showing them all these unloaded guns on the table. And they're just so nervous because of all the myths in their head and the fears of their head from what whomever told them, whether it's media or somebody else, you know, this gun's going to go off or what have you, you know, they have this and then they have the fear of the bang. So what is the natural progression? I see first the intimidation factor of not understanding the tools that are right there, you know, how the gun works. Right? That's that's the first step. I mean, because the more we understand something, the easier it it it's it's um, retained to us, if that's the right word, you know, and then they we assimilate what it can do and what it can't do. And then we get them over the fear of the bang, which is some inoculation drills where you get them on there. It's like, this is why the gun moves this way. And then it, before they even pick out a gun to shoot, we try to find something for them that's going to fit their hand and feel more comfortable because if it doesn't feel comfortable, they're probably not going to pull the trigger anyway. So we get them over the fear of the bang. And then we get them into something that feels a little more comfortable with less recoil or whatever. We're not going to give them some 44 Magnum or anything like that. But that, that is typically the natural progression. And I have counted this for, I don't know, 15, 18, 20 some years, 22 minutes, 22 minutes in my courses. I've seen someone go from shaking, teary eyed, 
that adrenaline dump that happens to to w- women just show it typically a little more than guys. Guys are you know, we're too arrogant. We're too proud, right? But the women, you know, they're, they're like, you know, their lips quivering and they got tears coming. And I've noticed that I'm like, okay, this is a normal thing. This is a very normal thing. And then we tell them that that is a very normal thing for you to experience that level of emotion and that level of adrenaline. And then when they're told that it's okay, I've even grabbed their gun while they're holding their gun on the range. Like, hey, who's in control of this gun right now? Me or you? No, it's not me. It's you. So I got to tell them that like, it's you. It's you tell me you're in control, Natalie. I'm in control. There you go. Now let's go out. Let's get after it, you know, and, and hey, mm-hmm. take a deep breath, take a deep breath. And so we walk them through that process to where they can help become more confident after they press those first rounds down range. And I love the response that I see after their first shots. It's, it's hilarious, actually, because I mean, some, I need to video this more often, but it's just funny to see that and, and them going, it's just, just this wave of emotion hits them and they realize they hit their target, whether it in big or small ways, you know, with maybe not so successful the first couple of times, but maybe so. And then after about 22 minutes, they're like, oh, I got this. You know, they, yeah. they become, you probably felt the same way when you started shooting, but uh, I've seen that over and over again. And it's just, it, it is a life changing yeah. moment where they feel empowered, they feel confident, and they need that. Everybody yeah. needs that. Just guys just don't show it nearly as much as the ladies do. Yeah, I would agree. I think women are um, definitely more mental, definitely more emotional, um, mm-hmm. which can work out to our advantage. I, you know, I interviewed somebody mm-hmm. else that was talking about how women are able to read facial expressions and kind of like understand intent with other people, like as far as understanding is this person a threat or is they or are they friendly? Um, yeah. But yeah, just getting that, like that first jitter out. And I think I've seen that with some of the women that I brought into the range where they'll, you know, they're very, very nervous to pull the trigger the first time and they pull it sure. once and then they have to put the gun down and they have to like sure. calm the nerves. But then once they yeah. do it again and again, and it reinforces in their head, this is fine. I can do this. I am capable. I am strong. Then all of a sudden it becomes like empowering because not yeah. only are they doing something that they can protect themselves with, but they're also overcoming a fear, which is huge, right? Like anytime yes. they overcome a fear or an obstacle, it's, it's very like confidence building, you know, like, Oh, I can do this. Like, this is great. Um, right. Which I just love to see. And I, that's yes. really cool that it's 22 minutes. Like I, I, I think that that's 22 really minutes, funny. 22 minutes. I've also learned in parenting that the 22 minutes is about the time that the average kid between four and and 11 where the sugar actually hits the body once you give them (laughs) sugar it's about 22 to 26 minutes like okay i don't know why we give those kids that sugar because here we go you know down the road and then like yep just like clockwork ah, (laughs) screaming in the back you know so anyway i I don't have a thing for clocking things sometimes but uh yeah that's really cool so as far as like those women go like obviously they're terrified and you didn't just Mm -hmm. like pluck them off the street and stick them in your class. So they came to you for a reason. Is there like usually a specific reason that you hear, or are they just kind of like all across the board? Um, Concealed carry is a big one. Um, In New Mexico, there's a 15 hour course. So we had to spend a lot of time um, with our students by state mandate and which I just, I ate it up because that means I get to give that much more education to somebody. It's not that we're trying to skate. We're trying to, I'm trying to dump as much information that they can possibly retain. And instead of giving them a 50 round course, which you and I both know, that's not really sufficient for a first time course. So, you know, we put a 200 round course in place for four hours, up to four hours. So we're actually getting them and we know the retention rate where they're going to come back. It's not going to be that high. So I want to give them, you know, as much info and as much contextual uh, education as possible for what they can take. So that's pretty, that's predominant. It's the concealed carry, you know, Hey, I need to get my license. I need to have something in the house or, or my vehicle or whatever. That's, that's predominantly the, the situation. Interesting. Okay. And so of those, uh, of those women that come in, like since you're a percentage guy, how many of them actually move on to like, Oh, recreationally, I absolutely love this. Like now I really want to get into this. This is fun. Yeah. Well, 30, 30 to 38% of the shooting demographic is, is female. And when it comes to retention of the courses in my stats, anyway, it's been well over 10%, which is really great because the average is just about 10% retention for keeping people to come consistently. And mine was about 18%. Mm-hmm. So um, I, I, I 
I love that. I think that's great. And it just speaks to the, the quality of the instructors that I have working with me or myself or whatever. And, and I, I, I really enjoy that. I enjoy building that culture and it's just, uh, it's a community builder, honestly. I mean, the shooting community or, you know, let's say you've got people in Scottsdale or whatever. It's just, it's good camaraderie. Yeah. I've, I've found that the shooting community is by and large, one of the most diverse and uh, yeah. welcoming community, which is, it was a little surprising. I, I find myself to be a little less polarized on a lot of different um, views. I just, you know, like I'll take information from both sides and then I'll kind of reference right. it with my personal experience and then kind of formulate my own ideas, which seems intuitive, but isn't lately. Um, yeah. And I've just found that like the people there are so excited and so welcoming of newcomers. Like they just want yeah. to share this passion with them. And right. I love that. Like I haven't found that in any other community. There's always something or somebody kind of like, you know, that doesn't want new people in or, you know, just is a little yeah. bit more like a tight knit group. But with the shooting thing, which I thought would be very much like a boys club that you kind of have to break right. into and, and claim your spot. Um, it has not been that way. Every step no. of the way I've had amazing people come alongside me and encourage me and want to give me like help and training and information. And it's yeah. just been, it's been wonderful. Like just some great yeah. relationships and friendships that have formed from it. Yeah. I think there's a lot of personal development that has, uh, that there, there is a need for personal development in the shooting community. And that's another reason why I'm working on, you know, life coaching and personal development stuff. Cause I have thousands of people that I'm, I'm engaged with and, and men and women that, uh, that need, that need help. And whether it's in the, in the range, or, you know, on the range or are in life. And, um, I think it's, um, kind of my ministry or my mission to, to do that. And, uh, as far as women, I've seen a lot of success in, in our women's courses that we've done. And I, and I can't remember if we spoke on it or whatever, but there is a women's event that we're planning for October. So stay tuned for that. That'll be a two day and it'll be a lot of fun. A lot that, of fun. Yeah. We, we spoke about that before we, uh, we did this podcast and it sounds like a ton of fun, like just yeah. Yeah. group activities, like going out and shooting and, um, yeah. cause it's different, right. On the range is different than outdoors. Uh, ranges are limited that's, that's by, right. you know, movement and ability and, and kind of like distractions or things like that, that you could put in there. But Correct. outdoors is just, a lot more. It's a little more realistic. Fun. A little more it is, realistic. It's more realistic. You, know, you can you can move. You can move on the range more, and, and you can you can have more people on the range listening and learning. And so there's yeah, there's a lot more engagement. The engagement level is higher. It's there. It's a lot more practical. We can get on the ground and shoot. There's a lot of conventional, unconventional shooting positions that that people don't get taught on an indoor range. And then and then there's some hand to hand and some street smart stuff that we're going to be teaching as well and exposing women to. So stay tuned for that. Awesome. Yeah. Stay tuned. And uh, I will, if the information is ready, I'll make sure that it is on Steven's uh, show notes page. So you can kind of like see any kind of videos or links that you want to pop up on there for anybody that is listening to this. Um, you can certainly do that and definitely go check out the gun life coach. Um, if you are in, is, you are training both in Arizona and in New Mexico or just Arizona? Right we're, now? we're, we're training in Arizona right now. I mean, we still do training for the air force or the army, depending on when those contracts pop up and they're, they've not been abundant lately, but, uh, but mostly here in Arizona. Well, we're gearing up more for the fall when the weather is nicer. Yeah. So stay tuned. <laughs> for the uninitiated, we are currently about one mile off the surface of the sun, uh, yeah. here in Arizona yeah, right? during the summer. Yeah, so, exactly. I always have friends exactly. like, Hey, you know, I should come visit. I'm like, Oh, not right uh, now. <laughs> how's October. <laughs> right. How's October, October would be like nice. It? Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Well, Stephen, cool. thank you so much for sharing, uh, what you're doing and your perspective yeah. and experience. Um, Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Ladies, if you are interested and you're in Arizona and you kind of want to see what Stephen is up to, uh, go check out the gun life coach. Um, Steven, do you have a website that they can go check out? Yeah. For training, go to patriotoutdoors.com and for inspiration, motivation on the range and in, in life, go to the gun life coach. Awesome. Thank you so much, Steven. Ladies, welcome, you heard way. it. Get out there, get over those jitters, get some training, protect yourselves and be not afraid. That's right. Be not afraid. Evolve your skills and evolve yourself. Nice. Great job. You made it to the end. You are one tough mother. If you enjoyed this podcast and want to support the work that we do and keep the good loving coming, subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes, Spotify, wherever you're listening. 
What's that? You're one of those crazy mother followers that wants more of this nonsense? You got it. Subscribe to the Moms Love Guns YouTube channel, follow us at Moms Love Guns on Instagram, and join our free private Facebook group to connect with other women just like you in an encouraging and non-judgmental community. If you want to share even more love, share your new favorite community with a friend or all of your friends, maybe even a few enemies, just to be safe. Get out there, overcome your fears, be not afraid. You have got this.